Yeah, it is really uh, good to be back. Um, you know, the 15th of August was a, a date that uh, we had at the Alaman Football Association in mind uh, to start the season. But we had to find out first if clubs were comfortable with it because we're probably two to three weeks earlier than normal over the last few years because uh, with Grand Prix altering their structure a little bit and I think it was on the uh, practice Saturday uh, you could, um, you know, get a game in. Well, you can't the way they've done it now. So, um, you know, last year, the way it worked, we missed a whole week after Grand Prix finish, which uh, was a big mistake. And it wasn't our decision, it was the club's decision, but they've realised now it was a mistake. But the next year, if the Grand Prix's on, there's there's no point in starting it maybe just before Grand Prix because then you have that two-week break. But we're listening to the clubs all the time, we're, we're picking their brains. Uh, but I'm delighted, and, um, you know, with FC Isle of Man uh, starting their playing venture uh, tomorrow at 6.30 at the Bowl, uh, it's a great day for Mag Sport and I hope with the good weather that everyone's out there supporting it. Absolutely. And how has it been trying to get the season started in basically such a short amount of time after the pandemic? It's been a real struggle, to be honest with you, because, um, you know, the English FA, when all this broke, um, give us all sorts of hurdles to sort out. And um, we got through those. There's all sorts of, obviously, safety measures that had to be put in place. Um, the clubs have, have been brilliant when they were told that they could train in, if you like, good quantity numbers. Instead of 10 players, they could train sort of 20, 30. And the clubs will play ball. And I think that's why when we applied for the 15th as a start date, they weren't comfortable with it mm. in England. Um, but with perseverance of the staff in the FA and ourselves, um, we managed to get the uh, all clear, which is, um, you know, fantastic. But, uh, you know, the restrictions that they were trying to put in place didn't really need to be put in place in the Isle of Man because the government have done such an amazing job. Uh, we're in a great place. And uh, the problem was that we had to then have a look at the, the league set up, as in teams that were in the leagues. And we were given permission that if there were teams that possibly could struggle this year, they could have an option to you know bow out of the Premier League, which two clubs did, which was uh, Castletown and Paul Rose. Then it left a, a big gap where we needed to get one or two teams uh, up from Division 2 into the Premier League. How do we do that? Uh, the English FA gave us an idea. Um, we took it to the clubs. The clubs were happy with just a little bit of a change. Uh, but then when we back, went back to them and said, this is what we're going to do, they said, no, you can't do that. So the only way we could do it was points per game um, for, if you like, getting two teams in. I don't like to call it promotion. And I think it, it was about right. I think um, certainly uh, St. John's and A United looked the two strongest teams in that league. And they'll be starting off tomorrow in the Premier League. So well done to them. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's talk about the Premier League. So um, the fixtures for this weekend. Um, as you said, top teams aren't playing tomorrow because of FC L of Man. But yep. we do have Air, versus, Air United versus Douglas Royal. Corinthians will take on Peel. Laxey will go against Douglas Athletic. Moran versus Ramsey. Russian United versus St. George's. And St. John's United versus Douglas Old Boys. So which are the standout matches to keep an eye out on tomorrow? Well, two of those games are the ones that are, aren't being played. Be, and it's not because of FC Isle of Man. Um, the Corinthians, uh, Peel Corinthians game and also the Russian St. George's game, um, they were not included in the fixtures at the start of the season. The fixtures weren't written when we knew that FC Alaman were playing. Um, we keep in contact with FC Alaman. They've been great to work with. And, you know, they've taken 23 players. They haven't taken one team, they've taken two. Um, so the fixtures weren't arranged on that day for, if you like, the four or five top teams. We give St Mary's a breather because, as you're probably well aware, uh, they've been battling to keep a team in that league. And hopefully with an extra week that we gave them, they've done it. Yes, they've got a fist team. Um, but it does look as if they're not going to have a combination. But Air against Douglas Rail, a great game to start off with. Air United littered with uh, Premiership experienced players. And home advantage, I'm sure the crowd will be up there in their numbers because the weather's good. Uh, against a, a Douglas Royal side who are probably going to suffer a little bit as the season goes on. Not too sure where clubs are standing at the moment, Rianne, with mm. um, college students because at the moment some universities are going back, some aren't. And you... Douglas Royal come into that category. So at the moment, I think Douglas Royal, if people like Tom Chattel, Dan Kelly and others are playing, then they'll be a lot stronger. But I think Air United should start off the season with a win. Laxey against uh, Douglas Athletic. Laxey are in the same boat. Um, Matthew Wilkinson, Uni, he's still here. Andrew Burkert, Uni, still here. There's one or two other players. So I think Johnny Palmer knows that he's probably got his strongest team available tomorrow. So I expect them 
to to beat Douglas Athletic, who are always awkward to play against, but it's at Laxey. Will Pell Hornrick has come back from Foxdale to them. That will make them stronger. And the Moran against Ramsey uh, game has been moved to Ramsey. This is 3.30 kickoff. The reason for this is that uh, cricket crossover sport with football players playing the same, using the same venue. Um, so the two teams have uh, moved this one to uh, Ramsey. And St John's against Old Boys is the game that Paul Moran's sending me to. And St John's um, the promoted side. Uh, they've got a good side there, but I think they're short in quality and backup as we're Douglas High School old boys just waiting to see how Tommy Miller copes with the pressure of being in the big chair uh, he's the new manager and uh, a great game and prospect there should be tight but I think old boys might just squeeze that one 2-1 even though it is at St John's Okay, looking at JCK Limited Division 2 Braddon versus Governors Athletic Castletown will take on Onken Colby versus Malou Foxdale will take on Douglas and District and Jims will take on uh, Ramsey old boys Looking at this one, uh, you look at uh, last year's uh, league, it was uh, superb because you had uh, St John's, you also um, had Air United then when you look at uh, Foxdale were right in there, Onkin were chipping away uh, towards the end, Union Mills were just unlucky um, to, to miss out on the points per game but um, they've accepted it and uh, Colby who were top of the league on lockdown uh, but played a lot more games when you look, they played 18 uh, to have the points that they did mm. and um, Foxdale had only played 12 so six games difference, you know, it's like a it's month and accurate. a half. So, no, it isn't, but it's just something had to be done. Um, my tip uh, this year, I think most people's tips, are Steve Fox's uh, team, Union Mills. They've done really well. And they're taking on Paul Rose this weekend. That's right, and uh, a few of the, the pulley old boys will be playing against Union Mills. But um, Paul Rose have had a real struggle over the last couple of months to, you know, try and get a team together and, it was hoped that they'd have to. Um, the game tomorrow has been cancelled against the combination. Um, we've asked them to stick in there for a week just to see if you can get enough players together to, to have two teams in it. But they're struggling a bit. Castletown against uh, Onken. Um, you know, Castletown again uh, struggled last year for players. They've got a first team. We'll, we'll wait and see about the combination. But as far as I know, tomorrow that combination game has been postponed. But just check on that one. Um, but I think Onken should have the better of Castletown. Foxdale against D&D. &D. Uh, D &D, um, I think he'll f find it hard against uh, Foxdale at Billy Goat. Braddon against Governors. Braddon have lost two or three really top players. Joe Andrews, one. Chris Kane, the other. Um, so I'm expecting them against Governors to find it a little bit harder, but they should win. Jim's against Ramsey Youth Centre. Well, at the start of all, uh, the build-up for the new season, Jim's were gaining players everywhere. So uh, they'll be... Hoping to beat Ramsey U Centre, but I think um, Ramsey U Centre are going to be too strong for them. And uh, Colby against Malou. I'm going to go for Colby. I think Malou, if they got Steve Priestnell signed on and if they got Phil Knox fit, then they would have been a force to be reckoned with. But without those two, I think they'll find it hard against Colby. And do you think players are going to be ready to come back fighting after, what, about three to four months off? Yeah, I think so. My, my head has been absolutely battered by people saying, get it started early, Tony. Come on, we want to play football. With the weather, the training numbers have been high for a lot of clubs. Yes, some clubs have been struggling, but hopefully that will rectify itself this weekend. Um, but yeah, I think just everybody wants to uh, get going. And don't forget tomorrow night. And, you know, when we had the meeting to accept... FC Alaman is affiliated club. Out of the 26 clubs, 25 voted unanimously yes. Mm. You know, there's so much positivity there. Here's the opportunity to watch them against uh, Guernsey FC, who are, you know, two leagues above them, if you like. It's what you wanted, guys. Go and support them. The weather is down to be brilliant. It's a great kickoff time. I love the Saturday tea times, half six. Go and watch them and then go out with your mates afterwards, first game of the season, and have a beer. And I'm pleading for them to support them. It's what you wanted. It's what the FA has given them the opportunity to do. Now it's the opportunity for them to go and watch them play. 3,200 we had, Jersey against Isle of Man. Let's see if we can match that tomorrow. The boys, Chris and everyone, the hard work that they put into it, deserve it. Shakespearean. Very good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it has to happen. It has to happen. There's I totally no point agree. in voting something in. And then, you know, some teams now, Rihanna, have, have actually seen what effect it's having on them. And it's the top teams. You know, tomorrow uh, there's, what, seven Corinthians players, I think there's seven Peel, seven Geordies, uh, and th there's Russians as well. Uh, so those four sides, five sides with St Mary's have been decimated, but we knew this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but just support the team. It's the Isle of Man, FC Isle of Man, and, 
even though I know there's going to be a lot of hiccups along the way with all certain things, it's the first game and it'd be something special to watch the first game and see how they cope against a team that should be better than them.